So the context for this one is very simple. Sensitive Society made a video making fun of pronouns and responding to a TikTok about why white people shouldn't adopt black people, which caused Mushroom Girl to respond to him, and Carmen Ryder made a response to her. I'll be covering Carmen Ryder. Let's begin. Hello again. Carmen Ryder here back with another commentary. Today we're going over another white savior. The video is titled Good Video Concept and Slightly Transphobic Execution Sensitive Society. Now just a quick heads up, she does stutter, ramble, and pause a bunch in this video, so I'm gonna be skipping the parts with those. Anyways, let's get into it. So, is anyone else here annoyed by Carmen's pauses? Like, I know that production-based points are like heresy or some crap, but editing out your pauses would make the video flow so much better. And if the pauses weren't there, the video wouldn't be unnecessarily padded out. Also, I can't believe that I'm saying this about freaking context of all things, but keep this in mind because it'll be relevant later. Chicken. Sir, please learn how to do a thumbnail. Like, even I can do a thumbnail better than this, and I don't even use anything fancy. I literally go into IBS Paint, draw some stupid ass shit, and then put it as the thumbnail. Alright, let's look. No. 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 At least I was able to improve my thumbnails. Next time use Pixlr E. It's a very good site that can help you make thumbnails. I, and a few other commentators, use it for our thumbnails. Thank me later. First of all, hooray! More awkward bits of silence from Carmen! I feel like this part could have worked so much better if Carmen edited the audio of her talking over the picture of Feminine Fungus's thumbnail instead of before and after it. Yeah, I know, I know, more production-based points are nitpicking, but that leads me to my second point. What is necessarily wrong with the thumbnail? Just saying that the thumbnail is bad and telling her to get new software doesn't tell her anything about the supposed problems with the thumbnail. I mean, you yourself said that the video was critiquing the disclaimer, but that's some pretty weak critique right there, Carmen. Also, the e-meme? Really? Come on, Carmen, there are far better memes out there. You can't even see what the woman is saying in the caption. You just say, why you shouldn't adopt. If you use a PC, you can see it perfectly fine. So, let me refer to a clip in the original video. You can't even see what the woman is saying in the caption. You just say, why you shouldn't adopt. What, what, what kind of context does that give? Just take out the caption if you don't want to actually show it. What the heck? From this clip, you can see that her problem isn't with the caption itself, but rather the fact that the caption gives no context towards the video. Like, she literally says, what kind of context does that give? Which makes sense because why you shouldn't adopt isn't a complete sentence. In fact, it kind of begs the question of why you shouldn't adopt what? And sure, you could argue that we just can watch the video for that answer, but this point is based on the thumbnail. Granted, Mushroom's wording is janky, but that's no excuse to cut context. Keep the full point in mind instead of just part of it, okay? First red flag is this dude's name. Sensitive society. That sounds like some white boy holding like a huge fish in his Facebook profile. What kind of insult even is that? Also, sensitive society is Latino. That's literally a running gag of his. But she says that the username sounds like a white guy, not that he is a white guy. You have missed the point of a non-point. We'll stop with the rambling and get on to the video. Well, let's go. Video. Casually ableist terms and some alternatives. Anyone else going to point out how janky Mushroom Girl's editing is? For she left in a split second of Sensitive Society's gameplay for pretty much no reason. Or am I the only one who really cares? Don't say this. Try this. One thing I would like to clarify before I actually get into his response and whatever. Then why did you play the start of his video? Hey, I know why Mushroom Girl played the start of the video. One thing I would like to clarify before um, I actually get into his response and whatever is that I agree with him on the point he's trying to make. 
in at least this part of the video. Yeah, stupid, lame, idiot, those aren't ableist terms. Like, what the f***, random TikToker? But that's, like, that, it's kind of obvious why that's stupid, and if you don't think that that's stupid, then are you okay? Please get some mental health. Um, yeah, but I just want to say I'm not disagreeing with the point that this TikTok is dumb because it is. Mushroom straight up says that she wanted to hit a point from the TikTok before she commentates on sensitive society. And it makes sense for her to point this out because she had issues with both videos. Granted, the point isn't good because Mushroom just says that something is obvious, which doesn't tell the TikToker why her point is bad. Like, good luck trying to convince someone that their point is bad without reasoning outside of it's obvious. And once obvious obvious to you might not be obvious to someone else. Still doesn't justify Carmen Rider removing context though, but to argue against Mushroom some more, lame can be seen as an ableist term. It is usually used to say that something is bad, but it can also be used to identify someone who cannot walk. You just don't hear that version of lame anymore, because the meanings of words change with time. Now this isn't me trying to make some definitive statement saying that the word lame is offensive, no, I'm just pointing out how saying that it's not ableist might not be entirely correct. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen this tweet. My pronouns are not ta slash co, so I would really appreciate it if everyone on here could respect my pronouns. Or I'm going to cry, wait, 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 you got my pronouns wrong. <laughs> Starting this off with some, some light transphobia, not that big of a deal. Honey, two cutes aren't trans. They're all delusional cis girls. That's what sensitive society was talking about. He wasn't making fun of trans people. He was making fun of people who make up like dream gender. So are you going to give me context on what too cute even is? Or because just hearing this random name kind of confused me. I'm assuming that too cute is the name of the TikTok user, but I shouldn't have to make assumptions because you shouldn't have given in context beforehand. That's the problem with the context just being you saying the title of Mushroom's video. Today we're going over another white savior. The video is titled, Good Video Concept and Slightly Transphobic Execution, Sensitive Society. Not to mention how Carmen continues to drop this random name throughout the video. I'm willing to bet they aren't too cute, though. Like, come on, Carmen. Really? Like, here's the thing. You can make fun of Gen Z without being offensive to trans people. His name is literally Sensitive Society. He's known for edgy jokes. Hence the name. So not to be that person, but you're literally drawing art of happy tree friends. How are you going to be offended at jokes, but be fine with cute animals maiming each other? Now, of course, neither is bad, but you seem kind of hypocritical. And that's an apples to oranges comparison. Like, alright, let's rewind a bit. How are you going to be offended at jokes, but be fine with cute animals maiming each other? Because they are two completely different forms of content. Simple as that. Like, yeah, they're both kind of edgy, but that's where the similarities end. This isn't hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when you tell someone, don't do that, and then you do the exact same thing. You said that much Mushroom Girl dislikes edgy jokes. Last time I checked, Mushroom Girl doesn't make any edgy jokes. Chicken. Like, transphobia has been around since forever. People are now just learning about it, even though it's definitely not a problem that Gen Z started. If anything, it's the boomers who started it. Pretty sure prejudice actually existed way before boomers even existed. I mean, yeah, I guess Carmen is technically correct here, but Mushroom was referring to a certain type of prejudice, that being transphobia. Hey, <laughs> also, to the Taco King white knights in the comments, Everyone who doesn't agree with me is a white knight. That wasn't her point. Her point was that since Sensitive society's white knights would appear in the comment section. And I guess you could claim that it's a joke, but jokes can still have points behind them. I'm not saying that he's some transphobic who's gonna 
go hate crime a bunch of trans people. No one made that claim, but okay. Why does it matter if no one made the claim? Mushroom Girl was saying that he was transphobic in the last video, so it makes sense for her to address the idea that she put out. By the way, she wasn't saying that someone made that claim. She was addressing the possibility of someone making that claim. Hence why she said, before anyone says this. I'm saying that he said some pretty transphobic things, intentional or not. You can't be unintentionally transphobic. At worst, it's insensitive. You really shouldn't listen to Dulu. No, you could definitely be unintentionally transphobic. Like, if I were to say, how are you a girl? You don't sound like one, while being unaware of a trans girl's identity? Then that's transphobic, even if I didn't intend it to be transphobic. Earlier this year, a commentator named Nintendo Meta Runner made a similar point against another commentator named Lin Lin. And Dulu is a bad comparison since she's someone that you consider to be an SJW, which to be fair, I agree with, but the point about someone being unintentionally transphobic makes sense. And that's coming from someone who dislikes the rest of Mushroom Girl's video. And I guess you could argue that my example is based on general ignorance, but ignorance can still be seen as transphobia regardless of intent. I didn't want some kind of hurtful apology out of him. I just wanted him to steal away from mocking trans people. Well, you didn't convey that properly. Despite the fact that one of the main talking points of her Sensitive Society commentary was to point out Sensitive's supposed transphobia, she literally said that Sensitive was slightly transphobic in the title of the video. She dislikes jokes that Sensitive made about pronouns. Her points are still bad, but she's still trying to convey the idea that Sensitive Society was making making transphobic jokes. So, how is that not conveyed properly? Her points are bad, but she was still trying to convey the idea that Sensitive was making transphobic jokes. So the point is, at best, vague, and at worst, is ignoring context in the original video. And that's where I was originally going to end the video, if this wasn't a double feature. Yep, that's right, I'm covering another Carmen Rider video. This time, I'm covering her video on Miss Deviant Crow, who ranted about a user called Stone Toss, who is known for making very controversial comics, so the subject matter of this video just got a lot darker. Before I begin though, let me make this clear. I do not like Miss Deviant Crow, and I am not making this video to defend her. It's just that Carmen's points against Crow are less than stellar. Chicken. Today we're going to be covering Stone Toss, and from the get-go you might think that's a bit weird. Compared to the other people we covered, he's not as bad. I want to point out that comic creators like this are barely touched on. I mean, all he does is make edgy comics, so there isn't much to talk about. Even though his comics are more than just edgy comics, since there are points that are made within them which would give Crow something to talk about. More so, I'm pointing these out for the dumb who want to say, Oh, sure, he has a lot of bigoted views, but he makes a lot of great points as well. No, he f doesn't. Yes, he does. Chicken. And before anyone goes, oh, well, he makes fun of the right, too. Wait a minute. Feathered face, funny beak, IQ of under 10, loud and noisy, smells spoiled fish on a hot summer's day, cross-eyed. This is no crow. That's a tanga. But in all seriousness, when did this turn into a left-wing versus right-wing debate? I mean, both sides of the coin have spread hateful views at some point. Wow, it's almost like Stone Toss is known for publishing comics that tend to be with the right-wing ideologies, such as anti-LGBTQ messages, as well as criticisms of social justice, as we'll see later. As for the both sides of the coin point, okay, and how does this invalidate Crow's point? And no, saying because Crow is biased towards the left isn't a proper counter argument for her point is literally just stone toss mocks both sides 
N yeah, I don't care though. He's still pushing out uh, hateful views. You mean dark humor? You know, dark humor that can be seen as having hateful views. Like people use humor to get points across all the time. That is literally one of the points of satire. So if you're trying to write off Stone Toss as just joking, then you are very wrong. Chicken. One thing that's very clear from his comics is that he very much does go out of his way to attack the LGBTQ community. You mean satirize? This comic tries to say that, oh, if you're going to say blackface is offensive, what about women dressing up as women? No, it's supposed to be irony in how the two subjects parallel in a dark humored manner. And before you whip your dick out and go, trans women aren't women. If I could have the floor for a moment, it's kind of funny how she suddenly strawmans her opponents as transphobic. Then again, do I expect anything else from Matanga? Bruh, what? Straw manning? All she was doing was addressing a potential counter-argument. It is something that a lot of commentary channels do, and it is perfectly valid to do on premise, because it proves that Crow is considering other perspectives. Her wording of, before anyone says this, implies that she is addressing potential counter-arguments. If she addressed those counter-arguments poorly, well, that's one thing, but that's not your point, so shut. This comic tries to say that being trans is basically the same thing as wearing blackface, even though blackface has a history of being used to mock black people. Uh, trans people don't. You're right, we don't. But I have seen some of my kind make fun of Asians and Latinos before. My entire career, everything that I've done has been about pushing boundaries. It has been about holding people accountable. I just cussed that Asian clean the fuck up. Ooh, what was that? Was that this person being a racist? Yep, Carmen just played a clip from a sensitive society video proving that trans people mock Asians and Latinos, which is so unrelated to the point where it's not even funny. Like, blackface has a racist historical context, whereas being trans isn't actually offensive. With these trans people that sensitive society is covering, them being trans has nothing to do with anything because sensitive's points are about their behavior, not actually about them being trans. And you can't just say that it's a joke, since the joke has a point behind it. Another comic tries to say that it's kind of weird that LGBT people can have pride in their stuff, but MAGA can't? Yeah, it's a double standard. If LGBT people can express their views and still be socially acceptable, then so can MAGA. It's only fair. Alright, so I had no idea what MAGA was before I watched this, so both Carmen and Crow are failing as presenters here. And that's my main problem with the point here. Though Crow could have presented her point so much better, Carmen's character just says MAGA is socially acceptable without citing anything or expanding upon the argument for her point. Like, good luck trying to convince the opposition that your point is valid without reasoning. Good luck trying to sway others towards your side when your reasoning is more or less non-existent. And good luck trying to persuade someone like me who sees MAGA as racist and homophobic. But nah, Carmen, MAGA is fine because you said so. The thing is, people choose to adopt hateful views like the ones that are represented with MAGA. You mean views you don't agree with? Don't make me go on another tangent, Carmen. I will do it again. No, but seriously though, literally one of the first things that popped up up when I looked up MAGA was an article with an image of a MAGA cap with a confederate flag and a KKK hood while explaining why MAGA can be seen as hateful and the unfortunate context that the Make America Great Again hat carries. Now, I'm not trying to say that this is definitive proof of MAGA being bad, and I'm not trying to say whether the article is valid or not, because well, that's just not the point. I'm just saying that there's a reason why others would label it as hateful, meaning that it's not just simply views that Crow doesn't agree with. The thing is, with gay people and LGBT people all around is, they don't choose to be in the way they are. And let's put up a hypothetical. Let's say same-sex attraction is a choice. That's still, that's 
still a stupid comparison here. Trump supporters support stuff that affects people and minorities. No, they support stuff that affects absolutely no one, and SJWs use Trump as a scapegoat. Carmen in the void. That is all. In a negative way, thus those views are bad. More, more or less, the more or less not the views, but enacting on those views. And Trump supporters often enact on those views by speaking them out. Speaking them out. You mean like how LGBT people do? I mean, what do you think pride parades are? People speaking out on their views. Way to miss the point. The point isn't just speaking them out. The point is that Crow sees MAGA as a movement that spreads hateful views. Pride parades don't spread hate. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. So essentially, you cherry-picked part of Crow's point and focused on said cherry-picked point instead of looking at the point as a whole. This one is probably like the worst one out of the bunch because it makes the flawed argument of saying people are often made gay because of trauma. I mean, that's sometimes true. So how exactly is this a bad thing? He's just taking this fact and making it into a dark humored comic. No, 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 no. Okay, so you're just gonna casually drop something as bold as trauma can cause homosexuality without any citation or any definitive proof and expect that to be a valid form of critique. Are you kidding me? This is so much worse than the mega is harmless point from before because at the very least with that point, the point is simply vague. With this point, however, this is a claim that anti-LGBTQ groups use. If I didn't know any better, I would straight up call Carmen a homophobe. Not only that, but I can go to Google, say, does trauma cause homosexuality, and find a billion sources that say no. And yeah, I know that Carmen elaborates on this point in the next interjection, but I want to argue against that as well. If I may use myself as an example, Back when I still believed myself to be a male, my mother would make me cry over incredibly stupid shit. Mainly through her yelling. And this wasn't typical parent yelling, it was like daddy 5 level yelling. I would then start crying and she would yell at me to man up. And in all honesty, I believe this probably contributed to my gender dysphoria. Sorry if that got all sad or anything, I just wanted to use myself as an example. Moving on. Ignoring how Carmen drops some name that I've never heard of in my life, and how this can be seen as anecdotal evidence that was made up for the sake of making a point, Carmen, this point is that yelling made you dysphoric, but you failed to provide a link between dysphoria and trauma. Just because you are yelled at as a kid, that doesn't suddenly make you a girl. Correlation does not equal causation, ever heard of that? Actually, that would imply that you provided a valid form of correlation in the first place. But you literally just say, I was yelled at, and this makes me trans, which is a pretty weak link between these two statements. Not only that, but the point that you are trying to prove is that trauma causes homosexuality. And you can say, well, being trans and being gay are still both on the LGBT, but they are still different. But fine, if anecdotal evidence is like the most credible thing in this backwards land you live in, then fine. I'm still a cis male despite my name and my profile picture. I'm still only attracted to women. And I was not only yelled at by my father at a young age, but he also straight up hit me. And the worst part about all of this is that I'm only halfway through this garbage fire. You know, Stone Toss, for someone that likes to say that the, the trans, the LGBTQ community, they hate science. Look at what they're doing. Uh, you, you seem to ignore the scientific evidence that uh, gay people are born gay. Also, for someone that seems to be a diehard biology fan, you kind of miss out on the fact that uh, biology and gender are two different things. The guy who separated the difference between sex and gender, John Money, was the guy who groomed two young boys to have sex with each other because of a botched circumcision. You really shouldn't take scientific advice from files. You might argue that a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Well, if gender and sex are different, then why do we need things like HRT? Why even have genital replacement surgery? It's just a social construct after all. Oh, not having those gives you dysphoria? 
It's almost as if those two things are the f same. All right, so I'm not trans despite my icon and my name. So I decided to go get help for this next point because I didn't feel like I was knowledgeable in the subject matter. So special thanks to Doodle Tones for helping me with this. Okay, gender is society's set standards and characteristics of how men and women are supposed to act, whereas sex is focused towards the anatomy and chromosomes a person has. Not only that, but Carmen even admits that bad people can still make valid points, yet she brushes that off to the side in order to argue something completely different. I just, why though? A blatant theme amongst these comic creators I've been covering for a while now is blatant anti-Semitism. Like, not even trying to be subtle most of the time, just, just mostly blatant. Now, we're only going to cover one of his anti-Semitic comics today since we've pretty much, you know, debunked the whole, you know, Jewish people rule the world thing in a previous video. Well, why not give us a refresher? Surely that would help your argument. Regardless, I can prove you wrong with one sentence. Susan Wojcicki is part Jewish. That may not seem like a much, but think about it. And a new trailer drops, where do you see it first? YouTube, looking for specific news coverage. YouTube, want to learn how to do something. YouTube, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I can't. I, I just can't. Carmen, all this proves is that YouTube covers several different topics and subjects, which is because lots of individual creators and companies upload on it. Yet your unfortunate wording implies that this was all being uploaded because of Susan. Even before Susan Wojcicki became YouTube CEO, news coverage, tutorials, and movie trailers have been uploaded. And wow, it's almost as if YouTube YouTube is an easy to access, easy to use site, meaning that none of this has anything to do with Susan being Jewish. Not only that, but you don't even make a correlation between this and Susan's religion. You just say, well, Susan is Jewish, and then you list off content. Like, if you're gonna make an awful point, you could, at the very least, explain it better. Not only that, but Crow's point was that the arguments are bad. The arguments of Jewish people rule the world, which could apply to Jewish people control society, or Jewish people control the government, given the context, are stupid. So that argument flew right over your head, since YouTube isn't the world, or a society, and you don't compare it to either, so your point is worthless. Also, not wanting a single religion to control everything isn't bigoted. Too bad that isn't Crow's point, though. Her point is that Stone Toss is anti-Semitic. Which can be seen as a bad thing since, well, that's prejudice. And I can't believe I thought that I had to explain this, but that's just how bad I think this video is. Her other point is that blaming Jewish people for all the world's problems is brain dead. And you want to know what's funny? Carmen says that Crow is straw manning, but this point right here, in of itself, is a straw man. How unfortunate. Let me give you an example. Most of, if not all the Middle East, has their main religion be Islam. Anyone who isn't Islamic can be prosecuted and possibly killed. Now by me saying that having Islam have a grip on the entire country is that bigoted. No, not in the slightest. Even if it was my own religion, Catholicism, I wouldn't want to force it on the entire fucking nation. Hey, you want to know what bigotry is? It is an unreasonable attachment to a belief. And not to sound like an Islamophobe or anything, but by forcing that belief onto everyone else, yeah, that can be seen as bigoted. Also, way to go using Middle Eastern Islamic countries as examples, which might be one of the single worst examples I've ever seen in a commentary in a very long time. These are some of the only countries in the world where you could be thrown off of buildings for simply being gay, thus being prejudice, and thus falling under bigotry. And I guess you could say, well, those beliefs are what make them persecute gays. Well, those beliefs can still hold prejudice, and those beliefs cause physical harm, so those beliefs should be put into question. And you even said that you don't want everyone to have your beliefs, so you just 
just went against your own example. And if I somehow misconstrued your point, then you might want to work on your crappy wording because I genuinely couldn't understand this point when I first watched the video. And to think all of this is ignoring how your example is used to assist a straw man. Screw the rest of this video because I'm done. I usually don't give final thoughts, but I feel like I might have to here. If there is one thing that persisted with both of these videos, it's that they both felt kind of lazy. From the vague points to the points without evidence to the points that missed the point of the original and the lack of background music, which is more of a personal complaint, but I know that Carmen has put background music on our previous videos. But to get back to my main point, both of these videos just made me feel like there was no effort. I don't know if Carmen scripts these videos or not, but if she doesn't, then she really should, and she should also have people look over these scripts in order to prevent more mistakes that I just pointed out. And to talk specifically about the video on DeviantCrow, you know, the video that I had more problems with, that one feels especially lazy, since... Well, you're covering Deviant Crow, someone who is somewhat infamous and has gotten several commentaries on her. Now, covering Deviant Crow isn't necessarily a bad thing. Her video on Phantom Strider is a good contender for one of the worst commentaries of 2021. But it's like you knew that you were commentating on a so-called easy target, which led you to not try. It has happened in the past with other commentary bandwagons, and I think that's happening again here. Like like, I wrote a comment on the video detailing my problems with this video, and one of the replies defending this video makes the argument of Deviant Crow is stupid. Well, just because you cover a less than stellar creator or a less than stellar video, that doesn't really make your video any better. Anyways, I hope that Carmen can take these points into consideration. If not, I guess that's fine too. Alright, this is the end of the video. You can click off now.